Welcome to Honest Car Reviews and welcome to the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser. What an icon and what a car from Toyota. This is unlike anything that I've ever seen coming from Toyota. And that is saying something because in today's age where retro futuristic cars are on the rise, this just is above everything else, I think. This will be a bit of a prototype, a bit of, you know, all the specs aren't there, but hopefully I'll be able to give you some sort of idea of what the new Toyota Land Cruiser is. And just look at this front. You can see the round headlights, which comes with the first edition. It brings you this special paint. There's also a blue alternative. The first edition stickers and some mud flaps. Otherwise, the front lights are rectangular and looks much more rugged and even much more military-like. There's also the seventh edition that is much more descaled and used for you know, search and rescue, for humanitarian aid. This is the civilian version, which brings you, you know, a bit more exclusivity or more design in general. But come on, did you expect this from Toyota? Well, I certainly didn't. And I just think it's one of the best or most surprising cars of 2023. Underneath that engine bay, you won't find a V8, you won't find a V6. And as of now, you won't even find a hybrid. It's a diesel four-cylinder turbocharged and it has around 200 horsepower but most importantly 500 newton meters of torque no zero 200 kilometers an hour figures have been mentioned neither has the fuel consumption or the emission numbers although it's a diesel which means that it can tow a lot and this can tow up to three and a half ton which is much much more than the american alternative that has a hybrid but if you look underneath here in the engine bay, you find that uh, there's a lot of extra space for a much bigger engine. And there are bigger engines in other markets, but not in Europe and especially not in Sweden. Looking in the rear of the new Land Cruiser, you can see that it's Prado. But in Sweden especially, this is called the 250. It replaces the 150, but in other markets it's called the Prado. This is the seven seater. There's also a five seat alternative. And if I open the tailgate. That was very close. The most rearward seats are operated automatically. And there are no specs on how big the rear trunk is, but probably close to previous Land Cruiser and with the rear seats fall down, I'm imagining over easily over a thousand liters. Folded up, there's much, much less space. So let's put them up. And I actually have to hold the buttons, which I think is quite unnecessary. And with the rear seats folded up, there is very, very little storage back here. But then again, you have to choose either seven seats or have a lot of storage. You can't have both. The Toyota Land Cruiser has always been a big car, but with the box shape, it feels even bigger, I must say. It's close to five meters long, around 1.9 meters wide and around 1.9 meters high as well. Apart from all the visual changes, the size, the body panels, the color, the, you know, the design in general, there have been a lot of changes underneath as well. Why am I pointing towards the tire? Well, because I'm going to talk about what's behind the tire and that is the chassis. It's completely new, a body on frame and it's stiff, it's more torque rigid, it flexes less which is good for both on-road and off-road performance. But Toyota has really improved on the off-road and on-road performance with a few upgrades. And the first one is the anti-roll bar. When you're off-road, you want the right and the left tire to move independently. 
So Toyota has added a manual decoupling that with the push of a button, it decouples the right and the left tire. So they move independently of each other. But when you go on road, you couple it together. So you get the best of both worlds, basically. Another feature that has now brought the Land Cruiser to the 21st century is the addition of electric steering. And that does mean that when you're off-road and you hit a big rock and the wheel or the tire moves suddenly, you won't break your finger. Step into the car and for some reason you have a grab handle and you might find that useful if you're very short, but when but if you're me, this is a standard SUV height, which means that neither the step ladder or the handle is necessary. Inside the Toyota Land Cruiser is also very, very unique and in the best way possible because you have buttons everywhere. And I mean everywhere, but it's integrated so well into the car. Manual controls for the lane assist, for the cruise control, for cancelling the call that you have, for navigating the digital gauge cluster, for increasing or decreasing the temperature in the cabin, the different driving modes, cancelling the traction control, decoupling the anti-roll bar, and locking the rear differential. You even have a really cool unique button to go into four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low, this is a pre-production, which means that, you know, the infotainment system, the digital gauge cluster is not completely finished. But I do recognize a lot from the digital gauge cluster and the infotainment system. Not in a bad way, but I think they could have done a little bit on the graphic to make it that bit unique. Other than that, I've talked about the, you know, the physical buttons, how usable it is. And you feel that around the entire interior. The seats are really, really comfortable. You sit, you know, they're not huggy. They don't need to be. You just sit really comfortable. The horizontal angular design of it all fits together nicely with the exterior. I need to check the rear seating space. I won't go into the rear, rear, rear seats because those are basically for children. You sit very high up. Luckily, the rear bench can be changed, so right now it's a very 90 degree angle, but you can either control the inclination from the rear tailgate or by just pulling the lever on the side here. And when you are leaned backwards, feel like a king. I must say, Toyota has done a lot of things right here. The sense of occasion, the actual feel of luxury they've really nailed down a lot of the quality aspects of having a bigger car not only the space inside but the sense of occasion the design the you know even though it's a lot of plastic it feels sturdy it feels well built even have individual control for the climate in the rear there's a lot of foot space a lot of knee space and especially for me that's pretty tall a decent amount of lower thigh support and since the car is very, you know, angular and uh, where the side door ends, it's not too high. Great, great visibility all around. What are my final conclusions of the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser? Well, it's one of the coolest cars of 2023 and it has some character. And you can't say that for a lot of cars nowadays, I think. This is truly unique and Toyota has really done something special. I have no idea about the price, but my fair guess is that it will be much more expensive. More tech, safety features, more driving aids, more of everything basically, will definitely not make this cheaper than a previous model. And the competitor, if you look at size, there is definitely the Defender 110. About the same size, about, you know, the same retro-futuristic design, but completely different philosophies, I think. And this has a really, really loyal fan base. During the years, it sold in millions. And the question is, which type of customer this new Land Cruiser will attract? I have absolutely no idea, and I think that 
boils down a lot to the onward presence, the onward worthiness of this car. Is it a standard SUV that can go literally everywhere? Or is it more towards the previous one that was more towards the off-road but could do on-road as well? And that's my final conclusion of the brand new Land Cruiser. See you next time.